So I am uh, Narayan from Dexetra, and uh, this doesn't mean the protocol Iris. So you might have heard of this. Uh, if not, you can read from uh, the reverse, it's theory. So uh, uh, Iris is basically uh, a product which is a, basically a voice assistant, which actually uh, lets you interact with your phone with voice. So uh, I felt it's a logical iteration of how you interact with the phone. It starts with, first you have uh, text-based user interfaces, then you have GUI, then you have touch-based, now you have voice-based. So I think uh, this is a natural iteration of how you can interact with the device. So uh, I'll just start with num some numbers. So we launched in October 19, 2011. That's like a week or a day after a Siri launched. And, uh, you know, uh, since then we have like 2.5 million users in the Android market. We have over 120,000 reviews by the users, and that's huge, actually. And uh, we have answered like 160 million answers till date. You know, that's that's like uh, the number of answers uh, Jeff Dell would do worldwide. More than that. So uh, that's a number. And uh, if you come to the engagement, uh, it's since February we have been tracking the engagement as well. Like we uh, handle 230k users on a weekly basis. On weekend, and each user spend uh, eight point five minutes uh, with the app, and uh, on weekends it even goes up. And users ask seventeen questions per second, and this question can be anything from just uh, in a chit chat, like saying I'm so bored and I keep uh, talking to the user in a casual manner, or it can be you know uh, questions on uh, facts, or it can be questions on science, can be philosophy, anything. And I just start, I'll just give you an introduction of how it started now. So I was basically you know started the city competitor. Um, uh, it was like a, it happened as a hackathon. It happened in eight hours. Uh, when Siri got launched, and everybody was talking about Siri, Siri, and we, we were doing Android development, so we thought, okay, we can also do this. It's not a big deal. And we came with a crude version. And we, even though it started as a very crude uh, app, we, uh, you know, obviously we had a lot of features, like something that even Siri doesn't have. Like you can directly post messages to Facebook, Twitter. You can get movie reviews. You can get you know, song lyrics. You can get recipes. You can get anything. I mean, pretty much, uh, we've been adding uh, dozens of applications. I mean, uh, with this app. And uh, if you take a glance, like uh, these are the features that it has. You know, it's, it has knowledge engine powered by Chacha, which includes uh, engines like Wolfram Alpha and uh, Wikipedia and many sources. So you can ask about philosophy, you can ask about geography, you can ask about uh, chemistry, physics, math, anything. You know, and uh, it, it can do a dozen of local services. Like I can ask, uh, show me near the Chinese restaurant. Or you know who killed Abraham Lincoln. So totally unrelated questions you can ask and answer you. You can also do phone actions. Like I can just say call my friend or call my dad, call my mom, or send a text message to my brother saying that I'm going to be late for the meeting today. So all these things you can do. So I mean, typically we can do with the with the phone. We doesn't have a display. And it, it according to the vision uh, vision research report, we are the world's largest independent. That's the private. Uh, you know, voice assistant company in the world. So first is Google and Nuance. So these are ob obviously public shared companies. Uh, apart from them, we are the largest across the platforms like Android, iOS, whatever. And uh, we also have a RESTful API so that other developers can also build apps on top of Iris. So that uh, tomorrow, if uh, a guy wants to build an app which will give you a solution for a differential equation, he can uh, just plug into our API and he can build that, and people can use that from Iris. So uh, just uh, re re rehashing this, like we have answer machine uh, supported by Chacha, we have this integration, you can play videos, you can do music reviews, you can get talk quotes, you can get song lyrics, horror quotes, you can search nearby, a lot of things, you know, generally whatever you can think of uh, with uh, different applications. And uh, how is it different from Siri? People like, uh, initially, even though it's, uh, you know, uh, you know tongue in cheek replied to Siri, it's not just a you know, Siri clone, because Iris works globally. For example, if you use Siri in India, generally you don't get any answers because it's not optimized for the Indian accent in the first place. Uh, it does not have any local information for the Indian uh, geography. Not just Indian geography, apart from US and UK, I guess, it's not available for any other geography. But this is a global product. And we have an API, uh, you know, which helps other developers to build. It's not a closed platform. It's not a wall garden. It's a place where anybody can uh, build an API on top of it. And Siri works only on the top end iPhone, like iPhone 4 which is like 45,000 rupees. And, uh, you know, I just takes an MB of uh, memory. It can work on any any small Android phone. And it can work, uh, you know, on any geography. It can work on any action, uh, multiple languages. And we're also building it for different platforms like Windows Phone, Dota, etc. And it can do a lot of other services that Siri cannot do. 
and we are also building a uh, capability on the virus where you can do actions like booking tickets, you know, resolving tables, etc. And uh, so this is a basic comparison between that. Now, this is a milestone. So we have been the top trending app in the Android market for a, about a month. Uh, we have been adding a lot of users. We get uh, a lot of ratings. So just get uh, you know, uh, the numbers again. Now, uh, so Iris, as I told you, is not just a single standard application. It's an application that it's a platform so that others can also build uh, a tool on top of it. So we released an API which is uh, available to any, any person. So it's not restricted to Android platform. Say you are a developer who is working on an entirely different platform. You want to control a thermostat at home with Iris. Uh, you can just uh, go get to a developer uh, documentation. You can create an application and control your own device. For example, you can control remote control car using some voice commands. You can control your home uh, security with a voice command. So we have just totally you know, decoupled the technology from the use case. Now what's next? So we are already uh, uh, branded as Aisha in India. So uh, we have a total Aisha branded phone which has been taking over uh, for the last few months. Uh, we are having uh, multiple partnerships with different vendors as well. We also have some operator partnerships outside India where this will be actually available on their app stores and this is going to be launched very soon. And the biggest thing is we will be the one of the first 100 apps that is going to launch in Windows 8. And this is the time that's coming on, and the, you can imagine like there are 160 million users at the first day of launch are going to use download this. And Iris is going to be one of the apps that will be on the desktop, and you can just do a control space and ask questions rather than you know uh, searching the Google or anything. It becomes a part of the desktop of Windows 8, the largest ever desktop uh, operating system will come. So uh, that's the roadmap, and, and that's about it. Very cool. Thank you. Um, can we take some questions? You have one? Yeah. All right. So uh, I think very interesting, actually, uh, what you've got. Is it a speaker independent, obviously? Yeah, of course. Yes. But yeah. you also have a speaker dependent element where you can actually train it to become a lot more. What's the effective rate? What's the hit rate and uh, hit rate? It, on a it, it varies from place to place. Uh, it, for example, a 42% of a user comes from US. So that's a pretty good you know, uh, you know, hit rate there, like yeah. over 90 percent. And then it comes to Europe. Europe, we have a Spain, France, and uh, UK. We do a lot of not English speaking you know, accents. Mm -hmm. But we use Google's engine for the voice to text conversion. So that's very, very effective. And even in India, if I say names like Narayan, Rahul, Kiran, it's just recognized. So the biggest challenge for us was to identify you know, proper nouns. For example, the word like must calendar. It's never, it, it's not in the dictionary, so they probably won't understand the word. So we built a big, huge database of, you know, proper nouns across the world from the failed queries. So we had, when we had 1.3 million queries, we had like 30 million failed queries. So we uh, tracked those down and we found what are the proper nouns which are using. And then we use our error, error correction algorithm which will actually, you know, kind of understand what this word is. So if, you, if in India, if you say must calendar, probably it will take that word. So you've got English basically yeah. covered yeah. across possibly. Yeah. And what other languages do you cover? Uh, we only cover English, but you know, variation of that. That is what we think. But have geographic customization, say, yeah. the region. Yeah, that is proper Local nouns. dialects and local, you know, sort of. Uh, we, we, we do the, you know, proper nouns. So the proper nouns is the biggest thing because uh, when you say call uh, Kiran, so if it doesn't take, it's a big problem. So we focus on proper nouns. So when I say I want to go to the nearest uh, Dhaba, it's to understand Dhaba is a restaurant. So these kind of words we take, but we don't actually pass a new language altogether. So the grammar itself is a big thing to, you know. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Can individuals also train this to their own voice and accent? Or uh, phone, can I train it to understand me much better? Um, we explicitly don't have feature like that. But I presume that that's not required because uh, it's all, anyways it's, got, it's training your, even your conversation is getting trained. So if you uh, talk to Iris in such a way that the teaching is her new world, a new uh, you know, phrases, it understands that and it always uses to the next user. So it is learning all the time. What is your roadmap for Iris? I mean, you are really big and nobody has ever heard of you. So, I mean, I'm sure you must be having some plan about what you want to do with it. So, uh, Iris has uh, an interesting question because 
uh, I didn't happen to be an accident because we are building something much, much bigger than I was called Friday. So Friday is, you know, it's much bigger than this, which actually sits on your phone and it captures all the information that's happening with your life. For example, you're making a call to a person, you're going to a place, you're listening to it. So it captures all these things. It happens the whole life of your, you know, life. And you can ask, like, uh, show me the call which I got when I was eating uh, in a burger yesterday in McDonald's. It will show you this is the person who called you. So that's the overarching part of your building. So I think just a piece of that. So I naturally fits into this roadmap of Friday. Great, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? We've got time. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so we've still got a little bit of time. If anybody has any questions for any of the presenters, we can take them now. All right. I guess we're done. And we'll, um, I know yeah, that you well, want to close this. No, okay. Yeah, just maybe a few remarks then, very general ones. I think we went through some very interesting presentations and uh, slightly a little bit of what I was originally talking in my opening remarks. Uh, which was kind of a little bit more visionary and futuristic, but I think we're heading in that direction. We've seen SMS as a very key channel, obviously, for emerging markets. <clears throat> it's about optimizing for the go-to-market. I think multi-channel, uh, social media being used very heavily, speed, time to market is very critical. Uh, it's about user stickiness and the wow factor. I think keeping that alive is very, very important, and the attention spans are reducing. So where do you get the right elements of your apps to be discovered in the right manner? Uh, you know, deep customization and personalization, so that micro-segmentation point is very, very important, I think. And I think what we're seeing is obviously this entry level of smartphones which are entering the market, so that's going to change. And I think what we see about the natural user interface, the, the uh, human HNI, to the, moving into the new space from, for example, like Iris, uh, getting a lot more local context and hyper-local information is, uh, is going to be the need of the hour. And uh, yes, yeah, so I think a very exciting time uh, coming in the future. Madan, do you want to add your observations? <coughs> How big is your team? Uh, it's total team. Yes. Yeah. And you? 